Hi everyone and welcome back to Top Grade. My name is Spencer Miller and today I'm so excited to share with you a selection of brand new Canadian middle grade books. Um, I've got a play to talk about today, graphic novel, fiction, non-fiction, um, so many great books to talk about, so let's get started. Here, here, The Orphan from Inhabit Media is a traditional story retold in graphic novel form uh, from Kugruk elder Levi Ulatak and illustrated by Nate Wells. I loved this blending of traditional storytelling with comic book style art. If you have graphic novel fans in your classroom, and I know you do, this is a great way to expand on their interests and introduce them to a more traditional tale. In this story, Ahia Hia is attacked by enemies in his camp, the same enemies that murdered his parents. He has to rely on his agility, his hunting skills, and his grandmother's protection in order to survive. The comic book style art and the thrilling story elements are a great way to introduce a new generation of readers to an ancient story. This book is a perfect fit in any unit that is looking at indigenous stories or other ways of traditional storytelling. Simone Half and Half, published by Playwrights Canada Press, is written by Christine Rodriguez. This play, set in a suburban Montreal high school, is especially written for Canadian teens and students. Um, it was first performed as part of a Black History Month tour performed in schools. The story is about 14-year-old Simone who is torn between her identities as a Canadian, a Quebecois, and Trinidadian. She's also torn between projects at school. Her friends want her to participate in a talent show, but also participate more in the Black History Culture Committee. And so she has to navigate all of these pressures on her and her identity. I promise your students have never read a play like this, something that is so current and relevant to their experiences. Again, it was specially written just for them, and so many students are going to be able to relate to Simone's story. The author also does a fabulous job of incorporating elements of black history um, and references to important historical figures in the text. For example, there are references to important uh, figures in Canadian black history like Angelique, Viola Desmond, and James Douglas. And this way, the play is a great setup for further research projects and discussion about black history in your classroom. The themes of identity and belonging also make it a great paired text with our next selection. She Holds Up the Stars is published by Anik Press and written by Sandra Laronde. This is a powerful coming-of-age story about identity and cultural discovery told with an indigenous worldview. The story also draws on the history and ever-popularity of horse-driven stories for young readers. The story is about a 12-year-old girl named Misko who, after dealing with some problems in the city, returns to live with her grandmother on the res. And while Misko struggles to fit in and make connections on the res, she starts to question if she really has a true home or place of belonging at all. But after meeting a spirited horse named Mishtadim, a neighbor boy named Thomas, and other friendly faces in her community, Misko starts to feel right at home. This story that covers so many timely and important themes also introduces readers to many contemporary Indigenous issues, such as that of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, at a level that is appropriate for middle grade readers. The book is also a great way to introduce a discussion about reconciliation into your classroom. Before you start reading, ask your students what the word reconciliation means to them. And then when you're done reading, check in and see how that understanding has expanded. From Orca Book Publishers, Orca Currents are short, high-interest novels specifically written for middle school students who are reading below grade level. These books feature special dyslexia-friendly font, cream-colored paper, larger trim, and other special features that make them more accessible to dyslexic readers and other striving readers. You wouldn't know it just by looking at the covers, which is actually really important so that these books blend right into your classroom library, meaning nobody is embarrassed to pull them off the shelf. I found the books exactly as advertised, ultra readable. They were real page turners and really kept your interest right until the end, which is so important for those hesitant readers. There are two new books in the Orca Current lineup coming out this fall. The first is Legends of Funland from Melanie Florence. This is a story about three teens who want to prove their bravery by spending the night in a haunted theme park. The book has a lot of thriller elements, some light horror elements that'll really keep middle grade readers interested. 
And the second, The Book of Elsie from Joanne Levy, is a really sweet story about a young girl who starts a community event and organizes a fundraiser in order to help gather funds to save her synagogue. The book is set during a Jewish holiday and incorporates lots of elements of Jewish culture into the storyline. It's a great way to introduce young readers to important themes about anti-Semitism, acceptance, and community. Barani is a middle grade novel published by Pajama Press and written by Michelle Katarusman. It is set in Indonesia, where the author spent some of her time growing up. The book is told in three perspectives. You're introduced to Malia, who is a young environmental activist hoping to make change in her community, but a little unaware that her actions are having some negative consequences on the people around her. Then you have Ari who is stuck in a real moral dilemma because he knows what the right thing to do is, but he also knows that his choice will have some negative backlash on his own life. And then you have Ginger Juice, an orangutan who is stuck in a cage and who's hoping to be freed to return to live with her mother in the forest. This is an honest and stirring novel about the choices that young activists have to make. It doesn't shy away from the fact that our actions have consequences and that young activists often face backlash, roadblocks, and challenges in what they are trying to accomplish. But it also emphasizes that the best way to make real change in our communities is by working together. This is a great read to kick off further study in a research project or a whole unit devoted to climate change, environmentalism, and activism. If your students want to learn more about environmental activism, you can pair your novel study of Barani with a nonfiction text. Check out Severn Speaks, newly published by Groundwood Books. This is the first in a series of books that feature famous speeches. In 1992, 12-year-old Severn Cullis Suzuki delivered this Earth Summit speech and became known as the girl who silenced the world for five minutes. The speech is presented in an easy-to-read way with striking illustrations and is accompanied by an analysis that gives readers more details about Severn's life and the context of her speech. Severn's speech that entreated world leaders to make the world more livable for future generations to come has only become more relevant in the last 30 years. Our final book today is another nonfiction title that also deals with activism. Secret Schools from Owl Kids Books is written by Heather Camlot with lino cut illustrations from Aaron Taniguchi. What if you were no longer allowed to go to school, like completely banned from learning? What would you do? Secret Schools shares the details of 15 true stories of people who risked punishment, crossed borders, defied laws, confronted social norms, hid from authorities, and even faced death, all to attend school. This book's format was highly readable, with split page layouts and vivid illustrations, it made it feel like you were reading magazine articles. With curriculum ties to global citizenship and social studies, secret schools will challenge young readers to think deeper about education and about the many barriers that people continue to face in accessing education today. On behalf of the Association of Canadian Publishers, thank you for watching. I hope that you're able to find a new book today that you're excited about that you can bring into your classroom. I also want to give a big thank you to Ontario Creates for their continued support of the Top Grade program. Visit the new and improved topgradebooks.ca to watch more videos, to see and download book lists, to explore books by grade level, check out blog posts with reading and classroom activities, and more.